This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head on the press through. No. The Lord is saying, lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done, he showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him, I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach Be a Voice, Not an Echo. For those of you who do not know me, I am Ambassador Chantrell Davis. I have a good word, good word, good word. But then again, what the Lord says is always good. Today is September the 23rd of 2019. It is 1122 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your hearts and minds together for a quick prayer with me. For there is no time and there is no space, but we are one in the spirit. Bring your hearts and mind in. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that we are alive at the time as this, Father God. Thank you that we are awake because you sustained us, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that as we slept, you kept us from our purpose. You hid pride. You sealed your instructions, Father God. And I thank you that by your grace, we will walk out those instructions, Father God, to perfection, Father God. For you said the steps of the good men and women are ordered of the Lord, Father God. So we acknowledge you in all our ways that you direct our paths, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Father God, for what you have decreed over us, your expected end. We decree your expected end over our day, over our way, over our marriage, over our ministry, over our mind and even over our very souls. For we thank you, Father God, that you wish for us to prosper and to be in good health, even as our soul prospers, Father God. So this day, fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Help us to walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Help us to increase in the knowledge of God, Father God. Strengthen us with all might, according to your glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, Father God. God, Father God, Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, Father God, that we will always know the hope of the calling and the riches of the inheritance and the glory of the inheritance in Christ, Father God. Father God, awaken in us a right mind, a pure mind, and a pure heart that we have pure expression in you, Father God. Make us, Father God, take us from, Father God, from reasonable service to the to, to the service of excellence, Father God. In the name of Jesus, make us to holy conduits, Father God, by way you are able to move through us to get to others, Father God. Awaken in us, Father God, your purity, Father God. Father God, I prophesy over our mouth, Father God, a mouth seasoned with grace full of salt, that we know how to answer every man, that we speak right words in due season, Father God, and how forcible are these right words, Father God. Thank you for your spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, for we have an unction from the Holy One, and we do know all things, Father God. Thank you for a mouth and wisdom that our adversaries can neither gain, say, nor resist. Thank us for the wisdom, Father God, that you hid up for us and not from us, Father God. We ask you for wisdom that from, from above, and we re rebuke all earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom, Father God. We thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper this day, and every tongue rising against us in judgment, we condemn. Father God, for we said, we thank you that you fight against those who fight against us. You contend with those who contend with us. You say the righteous thing to grant tribulation to those who trouble us. Trouble our trouble, Father God, and the spiritual and physical of this day, Father God, we entreat your favor, and we thank you for your favor going and camped around about us as a shield, Father God, and it goes before us into every place, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you for your goodness and mercy that pursues us this day, Father God. We forget not all your benefits, who forgiveth all our iniquities, who healeth all our diseases, who redeemeth all life from destruction, who crowneth us with love and kindness and tender mercy. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all those who are oppressed. You made known your ways unto Moses and your acts unto the children of Israel. Make known to us your ways this day, Father God. Make us a quick understanding that we will walk in your paths rightly, Father God. In the name of Jesus, direct our step, Father God, that we will be in the right place at the right time before the right people, in the right state of being and in the right state of mind, Father God. For your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We do not stumble in the darkest of heathen, Father God. You have blessed our way. You have blessed our day. You have blessed our mind. You have blessed our ministry. You have blessed our marriage, Father Father God, let the blessing reign supreme in all things, Father God. Be glorified in all that we do this day, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that this word goes forth unhindered, unchecked, finding outside for us. And every word you spoke would not return void, Father God. And I thank you that we are your word and we will not return void, Father God. We will accomplish the thing where until you sent us, Father God. We will occupy according to your word, Father God. We thank you for the angels you've given charge of us to keep, in all of, keep us in all of our ways. We thank you that they burn us up in their hands. We will not so much as dash our foot against the stone. There are ministers and spirits sent forth to minister for those of us who shall be heirs of salvation, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we occupy. We speak to the earth. We speak to the weather. We command our day, Father God, according unto your word. For we lay hold of your precious promises, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you always call us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And you've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of you who called us to glory and virtue, Father God. We are victorious in you, Father God. We hide in you, Father God. We abide in you that you abide in us, Father God. That we are effective in all we do, Father God. By way of your grace, Father God. More grace to be good women, men and women of God. More grace to be good sisters and brothers in Christ. More 
More grace, Father God, to yield rightly to your word. More grace, Father God, to minister and divide the word rightly. More grace to understand the word, Father God. More grace to obey, Father God, that we be pleasing to you in the name of Jesus and all things, Father God. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for your love and the blood of Jesus, Father God. And I seal this prayer in his matchless and mighty name. And I thank you again and I say amen. Okay? Uh, I don't know how many I'm going to do today. But uh, like I said, I'm going to change the art like I always do. So y'all know it's not the same message. Don't look at the art. It's never the same. Uh, he giving me so many. I can't just do one message a day. Some days I've did four, five, and six. Well, this dream, if the uh, Holy Spirit anoints me to do it, when he pulls up and said, that's enough for the day, I don't try to be no hero because without him, I'm nothing. I must remain with him at all times. What did I tell y'all? The Lord said, when I was having to correct some people, they're going to use, the Lord said, he never uses it forsake you. He said, this is what you tell them. The me never leaving them and for, never forsaking them is not the same as me being with them. What does it mean to be with, be with? He said, come, let us reason as one. He told me that means let us reason together. Come, let us reason together means reason as one. When he's with you, mean he's in agreement with what you're doing. You're pleasing uh, him with what you're doing because you can be displeasing him and he ain't, he hasn't forsaken you, but he ain't with you. He hasn't left you, but he's not with you. It's the multifacets of the Lord, which is why you can't take one word and get, draw even, even the understanding he gives you of that word. You can't just settle that that's the only meaning. He is multifaceted, like a diamond. Each angle of the Lord, there's a new facet of him. You learn to know him in a new way. He can take that same scripture and, and revelate on it over and over again because he is God. Why can he do that? Because the word is alive. It is alive. It is alive. It's not a dead thing. The absolutions of the Lord always will be, but the details of your walk will change. The details of the plan can change. But the absolutions must remain. You had, let me give you an example. You, you fornicated and you got married uh, and had a baby out of wedlock, but he's correcting you. So the path and the details have to change, but he's going to get you to the same end. He's going to get you to the same end. He's all knowing. Nothing you've done was a surprise to him. I keep telling y'all, he saw it all at once. Our Lord was slain from the beginning of the uh, earth. But he came at the end to lay down sin for all. He says sin when it is finished. It's finished. Sin died. Sin, uh, sin, sin finished on Christ. That's why you have to remain in him. Allow him to clean you up. Clean your mind. Why do we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind? Because when Adam fell, Adam was, he, he was made in the image and likeness of God. God stepped out on nothing and caused it to be something. He spoke to nothing and caused it to be something. He hung the world on nothing. We have the same ability. But we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind that we look at things and see it rightly and speak his will. When once Adam did it, Jesus came and showed us how to get back there by way of his spirit. He had to live in us. So now we also can speak to nothing and cause it to be something. But he has to give us his mind so that we speak to that thing rightly. That's all this is about. The enemy started, many of you, the enemy got, and this is very fitting to this message. Many of you failures came even while you was in your mother's womb. You were born in, uh, in sin, shaping in iniquity. Like some of them that had, uh, I'm going to use the same example, had you out of wedlock or they had y'all young. So that fur came in, and how are we going to feed this baby? We still in school. The baby picks up on that. He's being shaped in that. You have to immediately start breaking off. That's why the Lord even had me say, I spoke over my husband and I, and I was praying in the spirit and the spirit. Spirit gave me that wisdom. I said every word cursed that was spoken over us, willingly, unwilling, every word spoken over us, contrary to your destiny, from our mother's womb until now, I decree it no. I decree it void. I decree it stop. I decree and declare it ineffective. It is, it is stopped. I had to, you know, use the words that the Holy Spirit gave me at the time to, to speak to those things. That's why words are the most powerful thing you will ever do. And the most dangerous person is the unrenewed mind. Because they words still got power and they speaking like fools. So everything you, you frame in the world you live in, what you speak, you're going to have to live. Nobody's going to have to live in you. Now, your kids may have to suffer some of it if they live under you. You speaking stupid. Like, boy, you're going to bust your head wide open. Boy, you just so dumb. Don't talk to your kids like that. You prophesying over them. You are prophesying over your children. And that's what will be. Many of you have children. You trying to whoop their tails and you trying to whoop out what you trying to beat a seed out. That's, that's a harvest. Or shall I say, you're trying to whoop the harvest out of them. You spoke that. 
That's the harvest. Now you have to begin to speak rightly and you can restore it. Just like you created, you can restore. But you have to go through. Which brings me to this message. Because the Lord is a mighty thing. It's the timing of the things. I don't even know what I'm going to call this. But the premise of it. The number nine. The number nine. Now you've heard the woes of nine. Now the Lord wants you to hear his will of nine. Oh, y'all better catch what y'all better stay in the now. Stay current with the Lord. You've heard the woes of nine because everybody want to look at nine like it's bad. Like they see nine one one. They think it's bad. Everybody has heard the woes of the nine. Now you need to hear the will of the father in nine for he wills for you to cry loud and bring forth. He wills for you to cry loud and to birth. He wills for you to be on time, on point for the number nine is speaking. It ain't woes. What is the Lord saying now? So when you think you know the absolutions or something, you take one thing and you think that's the only meaning. What does that mean? You take a nine and you done heard woes and the ninth hour judgment and all this stuff and you think that's all it means. So the Lord ceased to be able to speak anything else to you. When you think that's all nine mean when you see it, many of you do. When you see nine, all you think is woe, woe, judgment, judgment. You have, the Lord can't speak to you no more concerning it. Why? Because you have boxed him in to a meaning and you will always be wrong because he is multifaceted. He is ever changing and always moving. Don't ever think you know. So let's speak to this. I'm, I'm naming this message right now, but this is what the Lord, you've heard the woes of nine. Now you need to hear the will of it for the Lord wills for you to bring forth. Catch this. Number nine, this is what the Lord is saying. Some of you, you are full term, the travailing. Now push and bring forth. I'm going to say that again. The number nine, some of you are full term, the travailing. Now push and bring forth, says the Lord. Number nine is the perfect move of God. It is the perfect patience of God. Some of you have been waiting and praying. And what does patience mean? Patience does not mean putting up with stuff. Now, there's such thing as long suffering, but you have to correct people even in long suffering. Patience means no matter what the enemy did, the Lord promised you that this is what you're going to do and these writers going to bring this kind of finances in because you have to work for the kingdom. You stay on that word when it look like the book won't move, when it look like the book ain't selling, when it look like nobody will buy, when it look like nobody listening, you never alter the words that's coming out of your mouth. That's what patience is. If the Lord said that you are a, uh, I'm calling you to be a seer, no matter what chaos comes, no matter what confusion the enemy tries to send at you, you don't say, well, maybe I didn't hear it right. No, he said it. He said it five years later. He said it. Well, and then you got family talking. Girl, she was saying that five years ago. Did she say that 10 years ago? Wasn't that seven years ago? And you keep saying, I know what he said. And you do not change your word because you alter your harvest. You do not change your words and back off of it because you alter what you're going to birth. That's what patience means. Many of you have been patient. It is the perfect nine. Nine, the perfect patience of the Lord. I know everybody want to hear the woes, but y'all don't y'all want some blessing? Don't y'all want the goodness of the Lord? Then you will faint unless you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Y'all only want to hear the terrible stuff. Don't you understand that the, the Lord said for you to seek justice and love mercy and love good things. And this is what he told me when I was praying early morning. You have heard the woes of nine. Now hear the will. The woes of what the enemy planted. In disobedience, the will is his goodness. The will is he wills for you to cry loud and birth from the unseen into the seen because nothing here, nothing good comes any other way, but we travail and we birth it. Why? By spiritual words. How do you get pregnant? By words. He calls you to conceive by receiving his word. And once you have conceived it, nothing can stop you from seeing it. At that point, you are pregnant with it. And when the Lord causes you to get pregnant with something, he must bring it to birth because you believed his word so much that you got pregnant with it. And what I mean pregnant, nothing anybody say. You be sitting there, you'll catch yourself in a day. You got to snap back because you just saw that thing. You pregnant. Some of you have allowed yourself to get pregnant. Y'all, you those of you who ain't saw that message, the lie baby, you have conceived mischief mischief and brought forth falsehood some of you have conceived mischief and you brought forth falsehood some of y'all about to birth falsehood this is a double-edged sword 
Some of y'all about to birth falsehood. You have conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. But we speaking to the ones who are moved in the perfect patience of the Lord. You have stood on what he told you. You have not wobbled in doubt, wobbled in presumptions. You have not changed your word. Well, maybe he's saying this. Well, I thought this is what he said. Well, maybe this is what he meant. None of that ever came out your mouth. I'm talking to you. Those of you, you never went through that. Well, maybe I missed no, you know what he said and you stood on it no matter who came against you, no matter who mocked you and laughed at you. Because I know some of you took mockers and you did change your words. You're like, well, maybe, well, maybe this is me. Well, maybe I misunderstood. No. The Lord said you didn't heard the woes of nine. Now, do you want to hear my will? The will of nine. Bring forth, bring forth. Because nine is full term. Catch this word. Okay, you do. Many of you didn't get pregnant. Now you have no choice but to give birth. You are full term. And I'm going to give you some revelation because some of you are overdue. This is a spiritual thing. Overdue because you're departing from places the Lord has sent you. He's put you with people. Why? Because you can't birth this thing on your own. Ah, catch this. When a woman did, because you went overdue because you, you took some wrong turns. You believed some wrong people. You trusted in the wrong people. So now you're overdue, but you're still pregnant. And now you need to help birth it. So the enemy keeps you from people that can help you travail and birth. Why do you think it's so much division? Why do you think it's so much suspicion? Why do you think it's so much uh, presumption? And he calls you to depart from people he put you with and you can't even bring forth. That's how many of you done got overdue and you can't bring, and you will never bring it forth without a midwife, without the help of a midwife. Your spiritual brothers and sisters to come together because you can't birth it alone now. That's why being around the right people is important. All you islands that think you're out here by yourself because you're so holy and you're doing so right. All you islands that prophets, prophets and prophetesses that think you can bring forth on your own. Men and women of God, men, he still, you, he still needs your loins. Women, he still needs your wounds. We bring forth because a man can pray. My, sometimes my husband can start praying, we praying, and I start because I'm travailing because he didn't got me pregnant with what he praying. Y'all better know how to pray together. And I'll start going off because I'm travailing because I, that didn't happen more than once my husband start praying. We praying together in agreement and I get pregnant and I, I'm going, I'm, I didn't push through. And that's when I saw a spiritual birth in the heaven. That happened even on one of them nights. We had a spiritual birth and I know why. Let me get in this word. I'm on fire because this is some good stuff. Nothing comes unless we birth it. And many of you are pregnant. Some of you are pregnant with mischief, but we talking to the ones who are pregnant with the things of the Lord. And you go bring forth falsehood. Go catch that message to lie, baby. Okay? Isaiah 66 and 9. Excuse me. Turn them upside down. It's not a coincidence, y'all. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Because everything in the spiritual kingdom is the other way. So look at 66 is 99. Catch this. And then to catch the other six is man. Because six means man. Six means man, which means person. Catch this. Shall I bring forth and not call? Shall I, shall I bring to the birth and cause and not cause to bring forth, said the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and then shut up the womb? I'm going to read this in regular. Shall I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Or shall I give delivery and shut up the womb? That means if the Lord has caused you, to believe a thing so much, you have stood on his word, you have not budged, you have declared, and how do you get pregnant? You be walking through the house just declaring his word, and then you're hearing words like these coming to your ear, and then you walk through in faith, you declaring these words, because faith come by hearing. He said you will have what you say. So not just receiving them words, you have to, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to hear the word, but you have to speak the word, and then you conceive it. Once it is conceived, I'm telling you, Nothing can stop it. Now, many of you can end up dying pregnant because you never get a, some of you take wrong turns. The enemy tricked you around wrong people. And I'm going to get to this. I got some bullet points on this. That's going to be very thorough. And you end up overdue. What does that mean? You can no longer give birth on your own. That's why the enemy got you separated. You ain't even telling people what's going on in your life. They can't even help you because you think you can stand alone and you won't bring forth because you overdue. So now you can't even bring forth on your own. Sometimes wrong positioning. I'm going to use the same example where a baby can be in the wrong position and you can't birth. You're in the wrong position. You're in the wrong place. And then the Lord has sent many of you in the right place and you you departed from the people he sent you to. You over there by yourself and he sent them to help you. Catch this. That's why I prophesy we're going to be at the right place at the right time before the right people in the right state of being and in the right state of mind. What does that mean? Because many of you are at the right place. And if you didn't allow the Lord to process you in your season, when you get to that right place, 
You can't receive the right people. They're around you, loving you, here to pray, and you suspicious, and you pull it off, and you to the side. You in the right place with the wrong mind. So your mind ain't been restored. That's why I tell people to sit still. So you're in the right place and can't even receive the right people. Stagnation. Okay? Then some of you are in the right mind. And then the enemy tricks you and you take a wrong turn. So you got the right mind, the right heart, and you around all the wrong people. Can't bring forth. Let me go forth. Meaning of the number nine. Because the Lord says, you done heard the woes of the nine. Do you want to hear my will? I will for you to bring forth. Full term. Now push and bring forth. Push and bring forth. Push and bring forth. There's a slight travailing. This is a spiritual. Spiritual start to travail. Spiritually. Pray like you in the middle of the night in ways you ain't never done. Sing. Travail. Push. Nine. Spiritual awakening. Service to humanity. The laborers. The out into the field. You. This was the preparation. He gave me vision. Now he gives provision for the vision he gave you because money answers in all things. Those, I say again, those of you who think we're supposed to be broke preachers. Now we ain't talking about greedy people. When you have a right mind, you're going to use that wealth rightly. You Money answers in all things. He said, now you're going to need some money and now you're going to need a soil because I ain't going to be with you for a while. Now when Jesus come back, we don't need it again. We ain't going to like nothing. But he's physically out of this earth in the suit. He been about, he been being with them in the suit. Spiritual awakening, service to humanity, humanitarianism. That means you're going to be out touching the harvest. He is raising up those to touch the harvest. And we have to birth the manifestation of the tools we need into this realm. Okay? Excuse me. Light workers. Catch this. It's called light working. The light workers. The light workers and light working. Meaning not light working, like don't weigh much, light, light of the Lord, light workers, leading by positive. So you light workers. So nine is the, those who spiritually awakening on them because they've yielded rightly. I don't mean going your own way because I'm telling you, I don't care who believe me. I see many of you, you toiling, but you're never going to really get where the Lord is taking you because you're going your own way and doing your own thing. And I could call names and I'm not going to do that. The Lord has already told me who would not listen. If they would listen, they would they would start to progress fast. But when people think they got big titles and big things, they won't listen. And the Lord, he will only have me try to tell somebody something once. And if they shut down, he'll say, don't say nothing else. Especially when they call themselves a leader. Not the little ones. I'll rebuke you and keep on or keep tearing your tail up with a spiritual switch. But the ones who call themselves prophets, prophetesses, teachers, and, you and the Lord send me to correct you once and you don't receive it, he won't let me say nothing else. He won't let me say nothing else. And he going to humble you because I could tell them where they're going wrong and could have told them where they went wrong a few times, but they would not listen because of the title they they, 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 they feel they're under. And I don't, I, that's, that's flat out. They, they would be further ahead if they would listen because I was sent to tell them and they did not receive me because they believe they were, we're on the same level. That's flat out. The, the Lord was revelating it. They believe they're on the same level. So they would not listen to you. And, and they're not because they're not even in the order of the house you were in. That's why. That's some of the reason why. Not all. Because some of them just stubborn and full of pride. And some of them have unheated, unhealed wounds, which is why they're so suspicious, which is why they're presumptuous. They always think you mean one thing when you meant another. They assume you said something when you didn't even say it. They don't trust nobody. They pull off. They're not healed. Only a person that's not healed does that. You're not healed. Some of you may be watching, okay? But I, and there's some people I've corrected, they didn't receive it. And I, I don't think I was right. I, I said what the Lord told me to say. They didn't receive it because they feel we're on the same level. And, and that's error. Okay. Um, light working, the perfect movement of God. This is nine two. the perfect movement of God, the birthing. The Lord said, you done heard the woes of nine. Do you want to hear my will now? Okay. Also, number nine is used to define the perfect movement of God. The biblical nine is also a number of perfect patience. Nine is perfect patience. Some of you have moved in perfect patience. What does the scripture say? Let patience have its perfect work. Some of you have believed the Lord on all these different things he told you. And patience has had its perfect work in it. You are about to bring forth. The Lord said you are full term. Now travail, push and bring forth for patience has had his perfect work in you concerning that thing. 
are the things that he has given you to do. Yep. You want to hear the walls or you want to hear the will? You want to hear the walls of man or you want to hear the will? This is beautiful. Let patience have its perfect work in you. Okay? Nuggets. This is why we should never box the meaning of anything in. He is multifaceted. I already said that out of my spirit. He will cease to be anything else to you. If you took, so those of you who took the number nine or 911, and all you ever see when you see it on the clock is whoa warning, whoa warning, whoa. It's a song now. Whoa warning, whoa warning. You got a little dance in your head. <laughs> Let me quit, y'all. I've been going for a minute, so you have to kind of keep yourself in the joy of the Lord. And you got a little tune in your head now. That's all you see. He said, I've ceased to bend to you. I can't even speak nothing else to you concerning that thing because you think you know. I can't speak nothing else to you but whoa, because that's all you see. I know many won't say that. That's all they see when they see 9 is whoa. That's all they see when they see 911 is whoa. And it's so many beautiful things. He said, you don't know you don't know my thoughts. I'm trying to give you my thoughts, which means you can never know my thoughts. That's a thought. You can never know my thoughts. Catch that thought. You can never know my thoughts. He's too big. He's trying to give them to you and you're going to learn. But you can never exhaust the Lord. Okay? So don't put him in a box. Don't take the meaning of one thing or even a scripture because he wrote it. He said, I will elaborate on the scripture I wrote. He can speak that one scripture and, and revelate hundreds of ways on that scripture elaborating because he's the writer of it. He's the writer of it. He said that to me himself. I wrote it. I'm the elaborator. That's what it means to study, to show yourself approved. Once you take that word in, he said to elaborate, to bring up, to elaborate on at a later date. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm the elaborator, which means I will take that same word and start to, to take this word and dissect that 10 times. Take this word. That means 10 different things. Take this word. That means this. Don't ever think you know. And likewise with the numbers. Okay. Don't ever think you know, because he can cease to be anything else to you. He can't even talk nothing else to you. Just like I told you, when you know people, don't ever hold somebody so high that you ain't willing to hear anything the Lord has to say about them, even about yourself, because then he can't even show you. You have to be willing to see whatever the Lord has for you and willing to let him show you anything he needs to. OK. Another bullet point. You will cause blockage in anything he can reveal to you concerning that thing. That being any person, any place, anything, any situation, you cannot take something and put them in a box that this is what this means and that's that. You, you're pretty much in trouble at that point, okay? Let's read Galatians, uh, development of fruit and birth. Nine fruits, nine spirits. This is not a coincidence. This is perfect. This is perfection. Nine spiritual fruits, nine, yeah, nine spiritual fruits, nine months, perfect patience, perfect move of God, the travailing. You are four terms, says the Lord. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. This is on the blot, everybody. Okay? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and, uh, yeah, against such there is no law. Yes, but love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Nine, okay? The travailing. Let me break this down to you in pregnancy, those of you who have had babies. The thinning, we know that's the cervical. That's an early phase. Contractions, you have been, many of you this, in this been going through utter, you be like, dear God, that's why That's why the perfect patience. Then no matter though you was going through these contractions and all this trouble, you never backed off what he told you to do and what he said. You didn't start changing your words to say, to, to, to try to alter it to something that may be more obtainable. If he told me a 5,000 square foot house, I, I ain't gonna say, well, maybe it was a two. No, you stayed on what you heard him say. That's the contractions. That's the active phase. The positioning, transitioning. All this is very tumultuous. And you stayed on his word. You stayed in prayer. You stayed in order. You stayed in line. You held your tongue. You prayed and you worshiped. You sung. You rejoiced with others who rejoiced, uh, 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 had good things. You cried with them when they were sad. You didn't hate when they were moving forth. You didn't turn your uh, uh, back on people you shouldn't. You held strong in the patience of the calling up on you through everything. Then there's the push, the feeling, the need to push. There's a feeling of a need to push. You are full turn. Travail and bring forth, says the Lord. Some of you know it's this last push. You're just feeling a move. Feeling a move. That's a need to push. 
Because let me tell you what's coming. I'm going to read the title after that because I'm going to give it up if I don't. Amos 9, 13, and 15. I'm going to read it in both versions. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim. One thing fast up on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, what's going to be happening? Blessings. Blessings. Like wine pouring off the mountains and the hills. I will make everything right again for my people Israel. They rebuild the ruined cities. Yes, we are. We're going to have money. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. Yes, Lord. Y'all know what he mean by that. Okay. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. Yes, Lord. I can't wait to have my backyard. is going to be planted. And I'll plant them. Uh, plant them on their own land. You're going to have your own land. Not just house land. They'll never again be uprooted from the land I, I, I've given them. Your God, your God, he said, God, your God says so. That's the decree. Amos 9, 13, that's the message version. I'm going to read in the uh, Amos 13 and 15 in the uh, uh, King James Version. Behold, the days has come, said the Lord. The days have come, said the Lord. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. Okay, you know you got to plow before you reap. But the, the reaper, go, the plowman go overtake the reaper. And the treader of grapes uh, the treader of the grapes, him that soweth the seed. That means you're going to overtake the one that sowed the seed. It, 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 the blessing going to come so fast, okay? The mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and they shall make gardens and eat the fruit of, uh, eat the fruit of them, okay? And I will plant them up on their land, and they will no more be put out of the land that I have given them. God, your law, uh, the Lord thy God says so. Now, he's speaking to Israel, but this is a spiritual thing. What did I say? What is the Lord saying now? That's what Rhema word means. What is he saying now? What part of the scripture is, is he speaking now? And what is the meaning he's implicating now? But you have to catch things in the spirit. Like a lot of people say, show me in scripture what it is. I, I gave this example. The Lord showed me in a vision what was going to happen to my niece because the, the, the back door was not locked on the car and I got up and rebuked it and prayed. Am I going to find my niece's name in the Bible? He said, I'm going to give you dreams and visions. I will instruct you. Be led of my spirit. Those who are led of the spirit, they are the sons of God, which means what he said to you then. He might tell you to shut your mouth. Do I need to go find a scripture that specifically says, shut your mouth, said the Lord? Yeah, keep on with the religion. Keep yourself blocked. Okay? Y'all catch that word. What's going to happen? Spiritual birth. I'm going to recap that at the end. I'm going to go back and recap that and recap the meaning of the nines. Problems can occur. Catch this. This is where the enemy didn't got many of y'all. I want y'all to catch this very closely. This is the bullet points. Because the same process of a physical birth, he used in the spiritual birth. That's why many of you come in the right places with the right people and you still separate yourself from them. The enemy keeping you from birthing. I'm telling you that right now. He's keeping you from bringing forth. Go before the Lord. Problems can occur in the process of bringing God's, vi uh, God's vision. Because the enemy is co continually setting traps. Do y'all understand that? Sending the wrong people. Causing you to be drawn to the wrong people. That's that Cajun incantation. You reject the ones that he sent to pray with you and to really bring you through. And then you go attach yourself to somebody else. Come on, really? Because the people he sent you, gonna be, they're going to make you act right. And many don't want that. They want who they feel better than. So they go around them. That's up on a few of y'all, and I can, I can cause them, but I'm not going to do that. They got to be around people they feel they more elevated than. You got to be around people you think ain't living as good as you so you can feel good, even though you got these titles of callings up on your life. You don't, you don't come around people who really operate in the fire of God because there's still conviction because the Lord ain't finished with you. You got wounds, okay? And I'm speaking from the spirit. Y'all can take it or leave it, Okay? Problems can occur in the process of bringing God's vision to birth as well. Whether God has called his church to birth new souls, you not only birth the souls, you are birthing from the unseen to the seen. That's what is that is what nine. He said, you heard the woes of nine. Now let's see if you want to hear his will. His will is for you to bring forth full term, perfect patience, birth. OK, power. These are the three things, power, the passenger and the passage and the position. All these things can interrupt birth. Natural childbirth. Catch this. 
Natural childbirth may be hindered by indicating contractions or the body lack of power to bring forth, okay? Just as many women lose strength at the end of their labor. You, boy, I'm telling you, I had my baby, my oldest son, butt first, and not feet, butt first. By the time I finished, I, I didn't have no strength. I couldn't even lift my head no more, okay? I literally could not lift up and push no more, okay? Christians lose heart and lack of power right before the fulfillment of God's promise. Hello, you use power right before the fulfillment of God's promises. Why? Okay, let me tell you why. But what is wrought in secret spiritually will make a big difference uh, uh, in the opening later of the kingdom. Although church may feel it lacks power again, um, uh, uh, the wiles of the devil. So therefore you have to stay. Uh, power belongs to God. Always know where your power come from. When you start to yield and lean to your own understanding, lean to your flesh, or you start to look to people, stay in who your power is. Stay in the force of God. Stay in the authority of God. For he said that it is I who do the work in you. And if you stay mindful of that no matter what, then you won't be you won't be able to go with how you're feeling because your flesh is feeling tired. But you know the power of God in you is still very strong. You can whisper. You can whip the beat the enemy upside his head with a whisper. Because it is the Lord. Okay? Many of you so tired and you, you can't fight and you can say it out of your heart. Because it is God. Don't look at this body. This body is against you anyway. Now it's the passenger that can cause delay. What does that mean? That's the baby. That, that's the thing you carrying. The baby. Consider that the thing you carrying. I want you to catch this. Another reason for failed childbirth may be due to the passenger. Why? That is the baby or, or the thing that you're pregnant with. Look at this in the spiritual term. When the mother is overdue, many of you are overdue. The infant is sometimes too large for her to birth or deliver. You are overdue. How does the enemy get you overdue? Taking you to the wrong place at the wrong time before the right people or bringing you to the right people. And because your heart ain't right, you can't receive them. So you go off to yourself or you won't receive them and you can't birth it by yourself. So the enemy keeps you isolated. Okay. The vision or the spiritual passenger may be too great for a couple of people or more great, too great for you to do by yourself. You need people and you keep isolating yourself or attaching yourself to the wrong people and you're going to stay pregnant and some of you going to die pregnant. If you don't figure this out, because you've conceived, especially once you start seeing yourself because you were held to the strength. But you refuse to get in position to birth. And I ain't got to that point yet, okay? The baby's too large for you to birth on your own. So it's because of the passenger. And this thing that the Lord has given you is overdue, so it's gotten too big for you to birth alone. You need help. But the Lord keep causing you, the enemy keep causing you to mistrust people and separate yourself. And even when you're around the right people, because you didn't allow him to process your wounds, you didn't receive them. Because trust me, if you allowed him to process your wounds, you would see the people of God and you would know to hang on to them. So they tell me various things went on. And this is the enemy planting wounds or even in you, not just people, things in you that you that the enemy still got in you. Pride, arrogance, presumptuousness, haughtiness. Can't do no wrong. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Out of order in your house. Unmarried. Because I'm telling you, unless you are going to be celibate, there's a limitation on how far you're going to go till you get married if you're desiring a husband. Now, if you just laid it all down, then lay it all down. But the Lord has to give you so you're not lusting and hot in your body. When when people have that gift, they're not even fighting it. It's a gift. OK, now let's move the passage. What's that? The canal, the birth canal, the passage, the birth canal. So it's the power, the passenger. Now we're on the passage, which is the canal, the thing that it has to come through, the thing that it has to come through. OK, Catch this physically and spiritually. I'm talking about a physical birth. I'm comparing the physical birth to the spiritual. A third uh, birthing problem occurs during passage when the mother's pelvis is too small. Now speak to this. Anybody didn't push the baby. Fur can cause a woman not to relax. All that gotta work, 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 move, move, move. You busy, but ain't nothing going on. Move, move, move. That is not how the Lord operates. And anybody who push the baby out, if you don't, if you scared, you don't relax, so you tighten. You gotta relax so the baby can come out. Likewise, in the spiritual room, he, he will, she will not relax enough, relax, relax enough for her body to make the necessary changes. You have to relax so the body can make the next necessary changes. In the spiritual realm, fear 
likewise, may come up on believers. That's why you got to take every thought and every high thing against the sense of against the true knowledge of God and lead it away captive. If a fruitful thought come in and you don't pull it down, each time it goes in and you don't pull it down, it's getting a stronger hold, a stronger hold. And that's anything, but I'm using fear because I'm speaking about a specific thing. Anything that keeps going on, a crazy thought, a random thought, because trust me, he's sending them. And if you don't pull it down, it gets a stronger hold every time you don't pull it down. And so fear may come up on believers with a vision, causing them to delay, causing them to delay too long. So you start getting fearful. Well, what if I'm moving? It ain't right. Or what if we uh, 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 prepare to relocate and then we ain't got all the money? Or what if I uh, put this book out now and it ain't quite ready and it don't buy? What if I don't know how to promote this book? What if I don't know how to... Uh, you know, anything the Lord has called you to do. What if I'm not sure how to put a conference together? What if I'm not sure anything the Lord has called you to do, you delay too long? And this is why unity, hello, this is why unity is so important. It allows us to encourage one another to the process of bringing forth, bringing forth. What are you bringing forth? The plan of God. It ain't just about selfish stuff. Everything you birthed in her from the spirit realm to meet needs of others and not just to meet your needs, but to meet the needs of others. Not just to have your answers, but to meet the answers of others. Not just to meet your supply, but the supply of others. Your birthing is never just for you. That's why when y'all by yourself, you selfish. I got this. No, that's why you're toiling. Unity. I already told you from melody into harmony. And many would not be able to make this transition because they need the preeminence. I got a message on that. Those who love the preeminence, you got to be lifted up. You got to be the one everybody come to. You, you got to be the one everybody say, wow. And you're going to die by yourself. Unfinished, uncompleted, and not having finished the plan of God in your life. There's your reward. Now, the last point, positioning, hindering the spiritual birth. I mean, physical birth, likewise, the spiritual birth, because I'm using physical birth to equate to spiritual. The fourth element is also critical in natural terms. Natural terms, baby poised in the wrong position can stop the bringing forth. A person, The baby in the wrong position can stop the baby from bringing forth. Sometimes the neck, neck is tucked. Sometimes it's diana. But like I said, I, my baby was butt first. They they literally thought it was a crack in his head. That's why they was puzzled. He flipped around in one day and it was a it was his butt crack they was feeling. I better pushed him out butt first. That was terrible. Love my son, but boy, that was horrible. <laughs> Positioning must also be corrected in the spiritual realm. Hello, many of you are out of timing because you go around who you like or who you think you better than. I don't, I don't care who get angry. Many of you go around people that you feel you're a little better than. That's stopping you. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be around people that make you jump, make you want to go up. Just like a baby, you've never seen them. You got a big child in the house that's three. That baby moving fast because they want to go. They want to go too. That's what that's meant to do. So you can come up too. But many of you only want to be around people you think you're spiritually stronger than. You only want to be around people you think you live a better, live a better than. You only want to be around people you think you know more than. You'll never grow. You hinder in your birth. Positioning. Okay? Positioning must also be corrected in the spiritual realm. Believers involved in bringing forth God's vision may have moved from where they need to be. Hello? Through unbelief or deception. We need to be in the right place at the right time before the right people in the right state of mind to bring the word of God, to bring the provisions of God, to bring the answer of God, to bring the light of God, to bring the hope of God. Are y'all catching this? Bring forth. The Lord says you are full term. Some of y'all, this is going to hit. You have been feeling the need to just press on through. You in the push. He says, travail, push, and bring forth. Nine. He said, you heard the woes of nine. Now do you want to hear the will? My will is for you to push and to bring forth. The promises of his people will give birth to the plans. The promises of his people will give birth to the plans, visions, and purposes. He fills you with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He breathes on what he put in you. Catch this. Many of us have stuff. And whoever breathes on it is who's going to get the yield. Catch this. That's why many of you, that lie baby message, you have conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood because you've let the enemy breathe on what's in you. So even the same talents that the Lord put in you, the enemy didn't breathe on it, so you yielded to the enemy. 
Or are you going to position yourself right and let the Lord breathe on you and yield to the purpose and the plan and the goodness of the Lord? Catch this. I'm preaching myself happy. The Holy Spirit preaching me happy. <laughs> Intercessors have to be given the task of aiding in the birthing. Hello. All y'all that think you can do it by yourself because you think you're so powerful. By praying for the perfect alignment of power and passenger. By praying for the perfect alignment of power. Passenger, passage, position, and each will birth. You can't do it by yourself. Many of you are overdue through all the wrong turns of your life. You need a birthing partner. You need birthing people. And all you're doing is putting yourself around people you think you're better than. So you can't bring forth. But I'm telling you this message here. I'm going to recap on it again. The travailing. The nine, the Lord said you didn't hear the woes of nine. Now, do you want to hear my will of nine? My will is for you to push, travail, and bring forth because you are full term, says the Lord. Spiritual awakening, service for humanity, service for uh, light working, service for the harvest, service for the field, perfect movement of God, the perfect will of God. For patience has had its perfect work in you. You are full term, says the Lord. Travail, push, and bring forth. For nine is the perfect move of the Lord. Nine, nine is full term. Nine is perfect patience. You have developed in perfect patience in a thing and bring it forth for you are full term. For this is the will of the Father. The Lord said you done heard the woes of nine. Now do you want to hear the will? My will is for you to push by crying out. That's his word. And bring forth. It's the perfect move of God. It is the perfect patience of God. It is the perfect will of God. It is humanitarian working. It is the awakening. It is the leadership. It is a, a, a movement. And it is the per, a perfection of patience in you. Of these nine spiritual gifts. Birth. The Lord says you are full term. The travailing. Now push and bring forth, says the Lord. I want y'all to catch that word. You have conceived this thing. And now it is time for you to push it out. Those of you who have stood in a line, you've received correction. You've received people betraying you. You received people uh, thinking wrong of you, rejecting you. And you kept your heart in line with the Lord. You kept your vision engaged straight no matter who did you wrong. Yeah, no matter who walked away. No matter what negative was put in your ear. No matter what the enemy threw. You did not move off the, not only the word of the Lord. You didn't move off the patience of the Lord. You didn't move out of the spirit. Let me go back to this. Not only did you not move off the word he gave you, you didn't move off the joy. You didn't move off the peace. You didn't move out of love. You didn't walk away from long suffering. You didn't uh, stray away from gentleness. You didn't stray away from the goodness. And you didn't stray away from your faith. You didn't stray away from your meekness. You didn't stray away from temperance. And against such there is no law. Patience has had its perfect work in you. And you are about to give birth to what the Lord has given you. The Lord said, nine, nine, you are full term. Now travailing is here. Push. And bring forth for the things I have spoken over your life shall come to pass. I, he said, I would not cause to conceive and shut up the womb. And I would, uh, I would not cause you to conceive and not bring to the birth. And I would not bring to the birth and then shut up the womb. The Lord said, nine, you done heard the woes. Now hear my will. And my will is for you to push and bring forth, says the Lord. Take this message before the Lord. Grace be with you. Blessings, beloved. And I love you all. Sow into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Word of God. 1 Corinthians 9.11 reads, If we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace, 
Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.